All right, guys, welcome to this page of the notes. Here we go. Some of my favorite problems we do in geometry are dealing with these trig ratios and using the trig ratios to help us solve for unknown links, especially when it comes to word problems. So here's the problem we have. A shelf extends perpendicularly seven inches from a wall. So there it is, right? It's a right triangle, right? We want our shelves to be flat. That way when you set something on the shelf, it doesn't just slide off onto the floor. Um, so. The shelf extends seven inches from the wall and it's perpendicular so it's flat and stuff sits on it without falling off. Uh, you want to place a nine inch brace under the shelf. I even show you that. There's my brace. I'm going to set something really, really heavy on the shelf. I don't want it to just fall off the wall. So I put a brace holding that shelf up. Almost all closet organizing shelves are set up this way. You'll have the shelf and then you'll have some sort of brace coming off of it. Um, to hold the tons of clothes that we've got. To the nearest tenth of an inch, how far below the shelf will the brace be attached to the wall? Well, that's really easy. Just draw yourself a little picture, right? I want to know right here, what is this length right here, right? That's what they're asking me to find, X. How far below the shelf, right down here, is that brace attached to the wall? What is the length of that side? Then I also ask you to find to the nearest degree, what angle will the brace make with the shelf and with the wall? Please notice, I am asking you to find the angle it makes with the shelf, that's this guy right up here. I want to know what is the measure of angle A. And what is the angle it makes with the wall? Well, that's this guy down here. I want to know what is the measure of angle B. So here we go. We need to find these three measures. How far down the wall will the brace be attached? And what is the measure of both of those acute angles? Fantastic. Here we go. Um, we're going to do... Hmm. Oh, look at this. I know I know two, two of the three sides of a right triangle. Gee, if only someone had written a theorem that could help us find the third side of a right triangle when you know the other two. Oh, that's right. Pythagorean did. Pythagorean theorem. So, a squared plus b squared is equal to c square. Please keep in mind, 9 is the hypotenuse. It's the longest side, so all you got to do is make sure that 9 goes in for c. The 7 doesn't matter. It could be a or b, doesn't matter which one. So a squared plus a 7 squared is equal to 9 squared. a squared plus 49 is equal to 81. We'll subtract the 49 to the other side, we wind up with a squared is equal to a 32. Running out of space, let me jump up here. I gotta take the square root of both sides. a is equal to the square root of 32. Is 32 a perfect square? No, no it is not. But I believe I can split it up or break it down into something that is a perfect square. 32 is 16 times two. Now, are there other ways to get, other ways to multiply to 32 besides 16 and 2? Absolutely. Absolutely, there's other ways to get to 32. But the reason I chose this one is because 16 is a perfect square. When I take the square root of 16, I get 4. A is equal to 4. Square, oh my goodness, that is so not nice. 4 square roots of 2, which for us is the length of that side right there. 4 square roots of 2, that is completely simplified. I asked you to round to the nearest tenth of an inch, so throw that into a calculator and here's what you wind up with. You wind up with x is equal to 5.7 inches. Both of those mean the exact same thing. I could even put inches 
on that one right there as well. Four square roots of two inches or 5.7 inches, whatever. They mean the exact same thing. That is how far down the wall that brace has been attached to the wall. It's down 5.7 inches. Okay, great. Hey, let's keep going. Because there were a couple of more things they asked me to solve for. They wanted me then to find the measure of the acute angles. Ooh, now it sounds like we're going to get some trig stuff. So here we go. Draw a little line in there to help divide this guy out so that we don't mess up my work. And here we go. First, I want to find the measure of angle A. So measure of angle A. Okay, here we go. Again, we mentioned this before. When solving problems, you want to avoid, if you can, avoid using numbers that you calculated. That way, in case I made a mistake, Right? I'm not going to propagate that mistake through the rest of the problem. Right? If I do something here that uses the number I found, but I screwed this up, I'm going to screw this up as well. So what I want to do is try to find some way of getting the measure of this angle using the values that I was given. Well, if this is angle A, that means that 7 is adjacent and 9 is the hypotenuse. So adjacent and hypotenuse. Sure enough, that is cosine. So the cosine of angle A is going to be the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Plug and chug, don't fat finger something on your calculator, except you got to remember, right, I am trying to solve for A. We'll get to that in a second. So cosine of A is equal to, remember, the adjacent side was 7, the hypotenuse was 9, how do I solve for A? That's right, remember the inverse trig functions. I take the inverse cosine of the adjacent over the hypotenuse and that'll get me the measure of angle A. So the measure of angle A is equal to the inverse cosine of seven over nine. Every calculator, right, is gonna have an inverse cosine. It should be probably the second function on your calculator. We talked about that a couple of sections ago. Anyway, this is a calculator problem. You'll take the inverse cosine of seven over nine and you wind up with the measure of angle A being equal to, I get 51 degrees. Sorry, not 51, geez, 39, 39 degrees, there we go. Measure of angle A is 39 degrees. Now, you got a couple of options because remember, I did ask you to find the measure of angle B. You certainly could. This is 90. We just found this is 39. You could do the triangle sum theorem, right? Because all three angles must sum to 180 degrees to find the measure of angle B. But since I like doing trig, let's do trig. So, the measure of angle B, I don't want to use numbers that I have calculated, just in case I made a mistake. So if this is angle B, that means seven is the opposite, nine is still the hypotenuse. So I know the opposite side, and I know the hypot, oh yeah, that's right. Sine of B is opposite over the hypotenuse. So the sine of B is equal to seven over nine. And again, in order to solve for the measure of the angle, I have to do the inverse sine of the ratio. I take the inverse sine of seven over nine. So the measure of angle B will be the inverse sine. That's a button on your calculator. More than likely it's the second function. So it'll, be, it'll still be the sine button, but you just gotta hit something, a button before it that changes it to this color that's written above your sign button. It may be blue or green or yellow on your calculator. Uh, each calculator is a little different. Anyway, the point is this, you do the inverse sine of seven over nine, don't fat finger something on your calculator, and you wind up with the measure of angle B is 51 degrees. Now again, whether you did the triangle sum theorem, which is a perfectly great way to do it, or you went ahead and did the trig function, you're gonna get the exact same answer, 51 degrees for the measure of angle B. And we've solved for everything that I wanted to know, right? We now know 
everything. I know the length of the shelf, seven inches. I know the length of the brace, it's nine inches. And I know how far down the wall that brace is attached to the wall, 5.7 inches. I know all the angles. This one was 90, this one was 39, and this one came out to be 51. I now know everything about that triangle. All right, guys, head on over to the next page of the notes. We'll try another problem just like this where we got to find the unknown measures of either the links or angles and trig functions will be the way to do it. I'll meet you there.